Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top story. The Caribbean's credit rating agency Carrie Chris assigns St. Lucia a stable financial outlook for 2021. COVID-19 protocols have been finalized for the general election. And the National Commission for UNESCO celebrates 40 years. The Caribbean's credit rating agency, Caribbean Information and Credit Rating Services Limited, Cari Chris, has reaffirmed the assigned ratings of BBB on its regional rating scale to the several debt programs of the government of St. Lucia. These ratings indicate that the level of credit worthiness of these debt obligations, a judge in relation to other debt obligations in the Caribbean, is adequate. Caricris has also maintained a stable outlook on the ratings. In a statement, Caricris indicated that its stable outlook is premised on the expectation of strong construction activity and a partial recovery in tourism in 2021, and that debt to GDP would not breach the current rating category's limit. The agency further indicated that debt to GDP would plateau with borrowings for the Hiranora International Airport's redevelopment but would thereafter decline as COVID-19's negative fiscal impacts begin to taper off. GDP improvements lead to better fiscal performance and fiscal consolidation towards achievement of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union's debt-to-GDP target of 60% by 2035 is pursued. Caricris says the ratings on St. Lucia continue to reflect the island's sound financial sector despite COVID-19 challenges, broad-based economic activity and moderate GDP strengthening expected in coming years. The British High Commissioner designate for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean has committed to strengthening bilateral ties between St. Lucia and Britain. He presented letters of introduction to the Prime Minister of St. Lucia on Wednesday and was also scheduled to present said letters to the Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS. The British High Commissioner designate for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean was officially appointed in April 2021. Details in this report. The British High Commissioner designate for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean on Wednesday presented letters of introduction to Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Shastney. The Prime Minister highlighted that the opportunity exists for a renewed relationship and the strengthening of ties between St. Lucia and the British. Honorable Shastney indicated that he has worked with the British High Commissioner in the past on issues affecting small island developing states, SIDS, such as climate change. As such, he is confident that the British High Commissioner is well versed on issues confronting seeds and is ready for the task at hand. So I'm very excited to have you here with the level of experience that, that you have. And I know that you're very familiar with the issues that we're confronting. And more importantly, we were just having a discussion this morning, we really want to strengthen the relationship with the United Kingdom, particularly now that Brexit is done. Um, uh, we can all move, move forward at a greater pace. Uh, we have two very important meetings taking place uh, this uh, fall, um, COP, is going to be taking place in the UK and That's I'm right. looking forward to working with you um, on that because one of the roles I have is a, the lead Prime Minister on uh, conservation um, in, in the Caribbean, in CARICOM. And I think that this is a very important and meaningful COP meeting. Uh, we've not seen the kind of progress that we've wanted since the, the Paris meeting. Um, and I think that there's an opportunity to go back and with the United States coming back in into the forum, we're really hoping that we can now make some significant strides in that regard. The British High Commissioner designate for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean explained that it is an honor serving in this capacity. The connections between our two countries are, are strong, they're historic, uh, there are links between our people, between our businesses, our governments have uh, a, a, a partnership, a genuine partnership and friendship which uh, matters to, to, to both of us. Uh, but of course the last year has been a very difficult one for, for everyone, for this region in particular. It's exposed so many of the vulnerabilities <coughs> that this region faces, that small island states face around the world. And that gives us an opportunity, I think, to, to look again at some of the basic assumptions upon which we build our, our relationships and think about how we can do things better, how we can do more how we can try not just to return to what we had before, but to, to, to build something much, 
much better. Uh, so I look forward very much to, to working with the government of St Lucia on all of this. We have, of course, here our resident British commissioner uh, and her team. Leslie Saunderson is new here herself, uh, but that means we have this permanent presence here in St Lucia, which means day in, day out, we can be looking for ways to strengthen our partnership. And, and I look forward to playing my part in that as well. The British High Commissioner designate for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean on Wednesday, 30th June 2021, presented letters of introduction to Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney. Fishers, fish vendors, fish processors and fishermen's cooperatives from all over St. Lucia came together to celebrate Caribbean Fisher Folk Day. Anissa Antoine reports. Caribbean Fisher Folk Day, also known as Fisherman's Feast, commemorates the Feast of St. Peter, the patron saint of fishermen with the theme Better Care for a Better Share, establishing a creative small-scale fishing sector. On this day, fisher folk across the board are highlighted for their hard work and dedication to the fishing industry. The festivities for Fisherman's Feast included a church service, a blessing of boats, and a prize-giving ceremony for the Fisherman's Feast Fishing Competition. Registrar of Cooperatives and Friends Societies, Egbert Stevens, says that the fisher folk are at the heart of the industry, playing a critical role in the sustainable utilization of fisheries resources in the face of a changing global climatic and economic situation. Well, the Fisherman's Feast is really an op opportunity for the, the different fishermen's cooperatives and for society to understand and appreciate the value of our fishermen, to give them some recognition for the hard work they're doing and the, the place in society, how they are contributing to that. Normally, Fishman's Feast is, is the, it starts with a church service. It's centered around the Feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, who are fishermen from, from, from the Bible. And really, what it really does is allow the fishermen to come out and express in society that we are here, we are working, we are working in the interest of society, and you know, please respect us and appreciate us. While the quantity and demand for fish and fish products continue to rise, both fishing and aquaculture provide a substantial source of food, employment and revenue. Secretary of the Castries Fishermen's Cooperative Society Board, Diane Matre, explains that whilst COVID may have taken a toll on the fishing industry, it is still of great importance to come out and reflect on the changing global state of fisheries resources, the economic climate and environmental conditions within which our fishers operate. We need to be united as one body, come under one body. It's not the board that will make things happen for them. It's not the workers at the co um, at the cooperative that will make things happen for them. They need to come and let us embrace each other so that things will work better for us in the future. But I am wishing them, wherever they are today, not only Castries and Banans Bay, but the entire island, a good fisherman's feast. And whatever they do, just do it in a friendship ma manner. Ms. Matre reiterated the Fishermen's Cooperative's commitment to working alongside the Department of Fisheries and its associate agencies to empower fisherfolk and build their resilience. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Registered political parties are among stakeholders that have agreed to specified COVID-19 protocols that will guide campaigning ahead of the nation's impending general election. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force made the announcement on Tuesday, 29th June 2021, listing the requirements of the political parties prior and during the campaign period, including constituency office meetings, voter education, door-to-door -door campaigning, marches and processions, motorcades and public meetings. All campaign activities and events must comply with COVID-19 prevention and control protocols as directed by the Ministry of Health. One small constituency office meetings, planning meetings, not advised, not public, and there's no limit on the number of meetings. Two, in-person public constituency meetings. There is no limit on the number of meetings. All meetings will require the prior approval of the police. Three, national public political meetings or rallies. No national public meeting or rally will be permitted during the campaign to reduce the risk of infection associated with major mass crowd gatherings. Four, 
island-wide national motorcades. Island-wide national motorcades will only be permitted on a Saturday, Sunday, or a public holiday. Each party will be permitted one island-wide motorcade per week. Permission will be granted for constituency whistle stops. Five, constituency motorcades only within the constituency. One each per party or independent independent candidate per constituency per week. Recognizing numerous potential risk of COVID-19 transmission during the campaign period, Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy says the authorities drafted the protocols and consulted stakeholders, including the political parties. We realize the need to come together and set protocols for those various um, meetings. Yesterday, the um, 28th of um, June, we had a meeting with um, the main political parties and um, also some other members of the Green Party. At that meeting, um, we discussed and it was a healthy discussion. And I must say I was very pleased with um, the result and had agreed on certain terms, especially um, the CMO stressing the need for persons to comply with COVID protocols. Um, we agreed and the parties themselves agreed that there would be for every event you would have a team to ensure that they would be reminding persons of the protocol have the necessary hand sanitizers and uh, so on probably um, in the open you need to have um, pipes running and um, running water um, so to say so that persons could frequently wash their hands the wearing of masks was stressed and um, we believe and in fact the the persons who were in attendance agreed that uh, they would do all in their powers to ensure that persons adhere to the various protocols. The COVID-19 protocols for campaigning 2021 took effect Tuesday, 29th June 2021 and is subject to constant review by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The National Commission for UNESCO has announced the winner for its logo competition in observance of its 40th anniversary in 2021. Chris Satney has more in this report. On Tuesday, February 2, 2021, the National Commission for UNESCO observed the 40th anniversary of the establishment of the St. Lucia National Commission following St. Lucia's membership to the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, shortly after its independence in 1979. Later this year, in December, the Commission will celebrate the 40th anniversary of St. Lucia's membership to the International Organization for the Francophonie. Secretary General of the National Commission for UNESCO, Marcia Symphorian, announced the winner of the logo competition and unveiled the winning piece at a small ceremony held at the unit's offices recently. I would like to announce the winner of the National Commission's 40th anniversary logo competition. Congratulations to Mr. Neil John. Mr. John receives a trophy which features his logo inscribed thereon, as well as a monetary award of a thousand EC dollars. The National Commission is a semi-autonomous agency under the auspices of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development. The key role of the organization is to facilitate intergovernmental cooperation to support national development initiatives. Ms. Symphorian says over the past 40 years, the National Commission has made a tremendous contribution to St. Lucia's development agenda by facilitating international cooperation and bilateral collaboration in UNESCO's fields of competence, education, culture, science and information and communication. The Commission is pleased to have collaborated with national, regional and international partners on several initiatives over the years. The attainment of World Heritage status, the inscription of Sir Arthur Lewis's papers on the International Memory of the World Register, 
the inscription of the Wardrick Walcott Collection on the original memory of the World Register, the establishment of the Roderick Walcott Collection at the UE Open Campus, the global celebration of the 100th anniversary of the birth of Sir William Arthur Lewis by UNESCO, the establishment of the Sufra Community Radio, Sufra FM, under the International Programme for the Development of Communications. While thanking the Commission for the opportunity provided by holding the competition, the 40th anniversary logo winner and budding graphic designer has encouraged other young people like himself to start up training in graphic design. To the, the website, I, I went to the UNESCO website and I saw a few, a few of their styles. With, they had the world, the, um, the globe, the world in the background. So I wanted to incorporate that in the logo, as you could see. There's a St. Lucian map in the back of the, the 40 years. So I, I, I just wanted to make it unique and basically speak out to the organization. And I just want to let everybody know, all the youth know that um, you could always start. I mean, if you want to do graphic designing or whatever, there's no time period for it. You could always start, you could always push yourself. The National Commission for UNESCO has also been instrumental in the provision of support in the areas of policy development for the St. Lucia Cultural Policy, the St. Lucia TVET Policy, and the St. Lucia National Language Policy. The Commission is of the view that this milestone anniversary will provide an opportunity to reflect on these and many other accomplishments while positioning the organization to embrace new possibilities to adapt to changing modalities and new realities. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. The observance of International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, commonly known as World Drug Day, occurs annually on June 26. This year, the observance brings into focus a collaboration between the Substance Abuse Advisory Council Secretariat and the Parole and Probation Department of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. The entities sharing a common purpose have joined forces for the past four years to facilitate the Breakthrough Through Drug Education program. The program facilitates the rehabilitation of drug offenders. Fiona Shalry is a probation officer with the RSLPF. We go as far back as 2011, and for the past four years, we've had this collaboration and uh, Mr. Caleb has been very integral in that. And we've had, for the past three years, um, 61 persons who've participated in the program. And um, I noted we've had about um, six females, especially our program last year. We had our last program last year, and we had six females who participated in that program. The six-week initiative features presentations aimed at educating participants on the areas of general and reproductive health, self-esteem, and family life. Program officer at the Secretariat, Caleb Paul, says the goal is to ensure the participants' holistic development. We definitely see the lives of these men being changed because of the, the information that they receive, men and women. And, and uh, I believe as, as the program goes on, we will have a couple of them giving their testimony mm -hmm. as to how they were able to make that change. Uh, it's, it's not a treatment program, so, okay. so it's, it's, it's just about you know, sharing the information and getting men to uh, realize that there is help out there. A lot of them do not, do not know where they can find the help. So we take them from that denial stage and, and usher them to a stage where they contemplate that, you know, I, I need to do a change in my life mm -hmm. and uh, these people can help me. The Break Free Through Drug Education program aligns with the theme for World Drug Day 2021, Share Facts on Drugs Save Lives. Fiona Shalry says the absence of sufficient information often leads to poor choices by the participants of the program. This is why the approach taken during this program is effective. I believe, you know, if they're educated enough, you know, I know about the drugs, I know the risk involved in using the drug, then I can make a more informed decision. So educating them on the use of the drug is very important, you know, at least moving forward, 
they know if I decide to continue with using drugs, then I know what I'm doing, especially to when you look at the dangers of mixing your drug. Shalri says the positive feedback obtained by the participants of the program propelled the administrators to continue to work towards enhancing lives. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. With all that's happening around us, simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history, and whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please, be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur, Madame, Department, quelle est responsabilité pour information à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à CBP Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, à Poseto Nouvelle Aquayol, Poseto Primus Hutchinson. En observance, journée des affaires services drogue, consiste qui est responsable pour adressé à conseiller public là concerné abusement de drogue à cette ci parler des démarches qu'a fait au lieu la terre à présent pour décriminaliser opération et service marijuana déclaration ça l'a fait durant une discussion à sur télévision indienne plus bonne semaine ici selon les officiers concernés là drogue comme marijuana ou et cigarette ni capacité à affecter sérieusement cervelle les plus jeunes en particulier, jeunes gens à l'âge 10 ans, à Mouta, et plus jeunes qui ça aussi. Officier qui est ça pour affaire programme en concept des abusements de drogue à cette ci M. Caleb Paul, dit que c'est agence et institution qui a travaillé pour chercher façon pour décriminaliser marijuana à cette ci Quand aussi, ni pour prendre responsabilité pour faire assurer qui a coopéré avec le gouvernement pour établir législation pour protéger. Jen Mamai hod service marijuana en même façon que j'ai fait pour cigarette et rhum. Monsieur Paul explique que ke pour les jeunes comprendre même si cette ici passe loi pour décriminaliser marijuana ça pas kay yon situation côté qui kay available publiquement pour tout monde servi et en particulier Mamai qui emballage. Paul dit aussi ça c'est raison qui fait concept là ka prend des marches pour aider et conseiller jeunesse pour as, pour aspirer les où il à dans un large côté yo maturité ben majeur à la sala yo pe capable pour faire décision pour servir drogue qui a goût mais pour ca conseiller les jeunesse pour tenir distance yo hors de drogue et marijuana officier conseil des affaires abusement drogue là veut dire qui conseil là j'ai découvert Côté un pile jeune maman à cette ci qui a servi un avec la drogue, et ça c'est une situation qui tue d'ajouter, et que ça, ça peut détruire, et bien qu'il détruit ça tuyau complètement. Association Hotel et Café Touristique à cette ci j'ai bien venu décision gouvernement à cette ci pour placer cet arrangement avec changement neuf pour régler ce protocole qui a place pour protéger le public là contre maladie corona. Annoncement des règlements ça là, haut gouvernement, c'est un qui est très positif. Association à faire comprendre. Bureau Premier ministre de l'ICI a fait annoncement ça là, jeudi 24 juin 2021, pour informer le public là concernant ce changement ça là. Selon explication haut bureau Premier ministre là, cette décision ça là a fait après la tenue consultation et puis le ministre du gouvernement a qui été tenu et puis sort des commandes. Et que aussi les examiner les mots cas de maladie corona qui en PIA présentement. Mais même si ça, appel qu'a sorti pour continuer à encourager cette lycée pour prendre dose de la vaccine. Association des affaires hôtels et touristiques, qu'a quoi que cette décision ça là, qu'a ouvert chemin au business, boisson, manger et transportation. À présent, et que ça a ouvert plus facilement 
Sipu weso sala kefe chef ofisi executive association Narani Aziz ya kopi mati ya kumutue apresiasyon kutut si gwekla ki te chen diskisyon ebi asosiasyon koseni te chanjman sala Aziz diki saka e facilite sekte privé l'okazioa pou se pri travay apweza ek ene koz ekonomi pe ya pou profite. Saka yo si soulaje apil la fami ki sou fe ou tan di wan tan se wek salate an plas. Asosiasyon hotel ek afe touristik o si ka bienvini kwe me bato touristik pou antwe an pokaswe sa se te madi li 29 an madje 2021. Asosiasyon an aplodi gouvernement set lisi pou premye batou touristik ki akoste an la wad pwe sara fe. Sa se depi COVID atake set lisi. A se Celebrity Millennium. Industri touristik la kapote preske 14 mil job ek plizye mil lot moun katou ve benefis hot sekte sa la. Moun ki pe di kat ID yo ka yini pou vizite bi wo elektoral pou touve sitwasyon sa la wegle. Asistan chef an biro elektoral an set lisi, Madam Alim Fielanel, eksplike ki prinsipalman pou yo ki ja an holaj a se le plegon sitwaye lani sete manye yo sa touve asistans pou fè sa pli posib. Moun ki pe di kad ID kad yo yo sa vini an biro elektoral an nepot an se biro a ki a se twa biro a o kasri ebe vye fo Evek nou ni an deklewasyon kote an jis di pe ni pou si e fom sa ba yo. Evek yo ni pou me depotou yon le fom la ek an 5 dola stop yo ni pou ache an post office la. Evek pou ya pou fè sa 100 dola pou e plase ID card la. Anko moun nan ni pou a y pe sa am we plasman an o gwef. Evek la ni moun pitet yo ni 70 yez evek plis. Ek la ni moun ki pou yo pa ke pa yo pa kapab pou pou peye la jan la ni sa ke ni kat gouvedman chef biwo elektoral ni isa isa yo nan se sa ki ka isa adwe se situasyon sa la evek la osi ni moun yo vole id card yo yo ka ale biwo polis yo ka ba yo an report evek de pou ni se report sa la ou pa ape sa do la ou jes ni pou fè deklawasyon evek sta plan. Ok. Ebe, mese medam, sa se te asista chef adipatman elektoral an set lisi, madam Lem Filanel, ki bout program nou an nouvel nou jodia, mwen ka remese ou tan pou ka gade, mwen ka bo yon invitasyon, ou jen pi mwen anko, si die kose ve la vi, le nga yi prezento ou lot nouvel an kweyo la preza, mwen ka vye prezento ou janel. Mercy Appeal Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.